7 News is brought to you by Volkswagen Dealers of South Florida. Now, on the 19 days after historic flooding, getting gas is still a pain at the pump. Residents hit hard. Now drying out and cleaning up. Governor DeSantis meeting with conservatives in Washington. While some ask why he isn't meeting with flooded out residents here at home. Just one station there. As an educator bonds out of jail. Accused of taking advantage of a 10th grader. The South Florida community comes together over anger of a new neighbor. The project is just not compatible with the neighborhood. Seven investigates. Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Craig Stevens. I'm Palkis Nere. The News at 10 starts right now. This is 7 News at 10. Off the top here at 10 o'clock, what has unfortunately become a common sight across South Florida, long lines of drivers waiting patiently, hoping to get some gas. Hello again, everyone. Tankers slowly but surely starting to deliver fuel to stations. Now, but plenty of drivers remain frustrated, forced to wait for hours if they're lucky enough to find any gas at all. The night team's Alex Browning is in Fort Lauderdale with uh, a progress report tonight, Alex. And Craig Belkey's this shell here on Davy and Andrews looked very different this morning. The pumps here were bone dry, but then they got a delivery. And as you can see, there are plenty of drivers here tonight trying to top off. This is your first try? Yeah. I got lucky. Seriously, I got lucky. Some hit the gas jackpot Tuesday night on their first try. Went to like three gas stations and nothing more. Others had to roll the dice a few times. It's a little crazy. This is the game of chance South Florida drivers have been playing for days since historic flooding interrupted the supply chain of fuel coming out of Port Everglades. Right now I have zero miles. Yeah, of course. Like, it's like scary. It just sucks. It just sucks. Gotta get to work, you know? Stressful. Very stressful. The relief and stress being felt by so many as the majority of gas stations in South Florida are without. <laughs> and long lines growing day and night from Miami-Dade to Broward at the few stations that do have fuel. We're waiting like 45 minutes, maybe more. And since there are many exits, you know, people are getting in and they're not respecting the lines. That's not a problem at this shell in North Bay Village. Cops off the beat to help keep the peace, directing drivers to the pumps. We continue to make improvements. You see an additional terminal. Leadership at Port Everglades says every day more fuel is being delivered. Eight of the 12 fuel terminals now operational with work to get the remaining up and running soon. They stress there is plenty to go around and no need to panic. Tanker spotted by seven Sky Force at the dock unloading and even more anchored off the coast waiting. The lines that we have for trucks, this is a 24 seven operation. They're not shutting down until they get back to capacity. It's just the process of getting the gas to the pump. A little relief tonight that you're filling up. I hope I can get to this one now, but we'll see, man. And it's in addition to the 24 hour operation happening at Port Everglades, the state telling us tonight they're also deploying additional fuel trucks coming from Port Canaveral and Tampa as well to help with the supply here in South Florida. We're in Fort Lauderdale tonight, Alex Browning, 7 News 19. People across Southeast Broward are continuing the painful and slow process of cleaning up nearly a week after being hit with historic flooding. My team's Maricela Burgos is in one hard hit Fort Lauderdale neighborhood now. Maricela? Craig, and when you're driving around this neighborhood, this is what you see, just debris, right? But this was furniture that belonged to this family who lives inside this home, and they have no idea where they're going to stay after Friday. They're staying in a hotel for now after that. They have no clue. Oh my goodness. Nearly a week after historic flooding impacted so many South Florida neighborhoods. Families like this one haven't stopped cleaning up. This is our lovely kitchen or what's left of it. Irina is desperately trying to save anything. The water was coming through the windows, through the doors, through the through the walls even. She remembers that night specifically when her and her daughter escaped. Where did you escape from? From this window, from this kitchen window. It was 1040. It was me, my cat and my autistic seven year old child. 
that we were escaping from here from possibly drowning or getting electrocuted. More than 20 inches of rain fell in a matter of hours that day last week. She shares pictures from inside her home just days after it flooded and shows us around her home today. This used to be our beautiful, lovely bedroom. Please don't step on the, on the carpet because it's still soaking wet. You can see the paint on the walls bubbling. And as they look deeper, it doesn't look any better. People throughout the Edgewood neighborhood of Fort Lauderdale have been tossing out everything that's damaged. But how is it that we're now basically left homeless with this shell of a house that's not livable right now and nobody's doing anything, nobody's trying to reach out, nobody's trying to provide help. We are trying to look for it and everywhere we look, we're getting denied or rerouted to something else. This family was shopping for new insurance. They, like so many other families, didn't have it and are now waiting for FEMA to help. It's devastating. Their hope is to move back in in about six months to a year and raise the foundation of the home. Until then, they're trying to save whatever they can. We're just going through bits and pieces of our life, what's left of it, and trying to figure out if we can save anything, what to do with it. And we just need help. Something you may not be thinking about is how awful the smell is as families are going through their belongings trying to clear all of this stuff out of their homes. There is only one shelter open in Fort Lauderdale. It's at Holiday Park. Live in Fort Lauderdale, Maricela Burgos, 7 News 19. Governor DeSantis is in Washington meeting with conservative lawmakers. But Florida Democrats, among others, are criticizing the timing of the trip, saying the governor should be here helping flood victims. My team's Joe Rotes is in the Newsplex. Joe? Well, Craig, the head of the Democratic Party here in Florida is saying the governor should be front and center when it comes to helping the people of his state. Tonight, his office is answering back. Ron, can you sign my book, please? Governor. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on the road, making a stop in Washington, D.C. Tuesday, quickly whisked into the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank. The governor trying to shore up support from Republicans on Capitol Hill as he considers a run for the White House. Are you excited about the turnout, members of Congress? His visit behind closed doors as he avoided a crowd out front. protesters gathering with signs as DeSantis also takes heat from some Democrats down south. When there is a disaster that happens in a part of our state, he has an obligation to be here. Florida Democratic Party Chairwoman Nikki Freed calling DeSantis out as South Florida still deals with the aftermath of historic flooding from last week and now long lines at the gas pumps in a historically Democratic county. Let me tell you, if this flood had happened in Naples, if it had happened in the villages, if it had happened in, in outside of inside of Polk County, he would have been there himself. DeSantis quickly declaring a state of emergency for Broward County last week. His office telling 7 News Tuesday night, Florida's Division of Emergency Management has been active since the flooding occurred and are even now working to alleviate gas supply issues and ensure no obstacles from the state keep companies in South Florida from keeping gas pumps stocked. Kevin Guthrie heads Florida's Division of Emergency Management. Yes, Kevin is doing his job. Ron is not. As governor of the state of Florida, you have an obligation to show up to your people, not just to send people. At least one Republican, Lance Gooden of Texas, said he would support Donald Trump in the 2024 election after meeting with Governor DeSantis today. Tomorrow, DeSantis will make a public appearance in South Carolina as he continues to meet with supporters and garner GOP support. We're live in the Newsplex, Joe Rose, 7 News 19. Just One Station is there as a South Florida educator posts bond and leaves jail, accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a student. As the night team Sheldon Fox tells us now, she is not the only teacher in trouble with the law. Trusted to teach and take care of children, a pair of fired educators get a failing grade from their school communities and a letter grade of C from police for alleged criminal behavior. You doing, Tracy? Only seven news cameras were there Tuesday when Tracy Smith waited to be picked up from jail. Would you like to say anything about what happened? The mom of three and ex-head of the Exceed Preparatory Academy in Coral Springs is now a defendant 
charged with engaging in sexual conduct with a student. It came as a complete shock to everyone at the school. Hi, I'm Tracy Smith, president of Smith Smiles Toy Donations. The 20 plus year teacher also heads up Smith Smiles, which delivers toys to kids in the hospital. Coral Springs cops accuse her of hosting a teen to all day visits in the principal's office for solicitation, inappropriate touching, and photo exchanges online. She's been fired. In Miami-Dade, there's the disgraced terminated civics teacher at Country Club Middle School, Muhammad Ahmed. The 28-year-old busted after a months-long investigation that revealed he pursued an alleged intimate relationship with a 13-year-old boy. He was always really close with the kid, buying him gifts. That kid would always come to his classroom and Mr. Ahmed would always give him money. He always had him in his room, the door was locked. Cops say they searched his phone and found lots of interaction between the two. An arrest report detailing a shirtless Ahmed chasing and touching the child in his classroom. Police saying his phone was packed with child porn and a birthday card from Ahmed to the student included this, quote, I look forward to celebrating a lifetime of birthdays with you. I love you so much. He's accused of child abuse and other offenses and has been unable to be reached for comment. His fellow fired former educator in Broward Smith, any comment at all, had nothing to say. Both defendants have bonded out and have criminal pending cases. We're in Coral Springs tonight. Sheldon Fox, 7 News 19. Southwest Airlines back in service after experiencing some delays and disruptions this morning. The FAA paused half the airline's departing flights at the airline's request after Southwest experienced a technical glitch causing it to lose connections to some operational data. More than 1,800 flights, 44% of Southwest's schedule, including some at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International, were briefly delayed. Also in seven, one person is dead tonight after the collapse of a parking garage in Lower Manhattan. Several cars were crushed after the concrete floors pancaked one on top of each other. Vehicles tumbled down to the street level. Authorities believe they've accounted for everybody who'd been inside, but the search effort continued into the evening to make sure no one was in any of those vehicles. Five people were injured. One garage employee was rescued after leaping onto a neighboring rooftop. It wasn't immediately clear what caused the collapse, but there are reports tonight that the city's building department records show the three-story structure has operated as a garage since at least the 1920s. Fox News Channel becoming part of the news today, agreeing to fork over hundreds of millions of dollars to settle a lawsuit filed in the aftermath of former President Trump's loss to President Biden. The 19th Robin Simmons is live in the Satellite Center with more on this, Robin. It is a massive settlement, but the terms apparently do not force Fox to admit to the lies on air. They also don't have to make any retraction. Still, it is historic. It is the largest public settlement from a media company in U.S. history. Today's settlement of $787,500,000 represents vindication and accountability. Lies have consequences. A last minute settlement coming the day the $1.6 billion defamation trial against Fox News was supposed to start. The potential witnesses so high profile from Fox Corporation Chair Rupert Murdoch to the marquee faces from the cable news giant, a giant tent was set up to protect them from the worldwide news outlets that had converged on Delaware. Fox has admitted to telling lies about Dominion. Claims about voter fraud broadcast repeatedly during Fox's 2020 election coverage. Emails, texts and deposition testimonies showing Fox opinion hosts said one thing on air like the voting machines were changing votes for President Trump to votes for Joe Biden, but in private said such claims of vote rigging were lies. The CEO of Dominion Voting Systems says the case is about much more than the damage done to his company. I cannot thank the election officials that we serve enough. Without them, there is no democracy. Already delayed a day, hours after a jury was seated Tuesday, another delay followed by an announcement in certain claims about Dominion to be false. This settlement reflects Fox's continued commitment to the highest journalistic standards.
Another election technology company, Smartmatic, has a $2.7 billion defamation lawsuit against Fox. Meanwhile, Dominion has six other upcoming lawsuits connected to the 2020 election. Live at the Satellite Center, Robin Simmons, 7 News 19. Your Miami Heat looking to keep their playoff momentum going as they take on the Bucks tomorrow night. And Milwaukee's biggest star may have to sit this one out. The night team's Josh Moser here with more. Josh. Hi, Craig and Belkis. Right now, Giannis Antetokounmpo is officially doubtful for Wednesday's Game 2. The Greek freak not practicing today. Giannis playing just 11 minutes in Game 1 after falling hard on his lower back in the first quarter. X-rays and an MRI coming back clean. Head coach Mike Budenholzer saying Giannis will be a game-time decision due to the bruised back. Now, if the two-time MVP does not play, the Heat have to take advantage. When a team is up 2-0 in a seven-game series, they go on to win 92% of the time. This, again, is the 1-8 matchup in the East. We'll keep you posted, and, of course, we have more in sports. In the Plex this evening, Josh Moser, 7 News Night. See you then, Josh. Thank you. So I had here from the night team, the South Florida community up in arms over what will be built on this lot. It is tonight's 7 Investigate. Also, some traveling strangers band together when Mother Nature rerouted their trip to Florida. This was a real team effort. And teens going on the attack, beating a Chicago couple. Now the victims talking about this random case of rage. Volkswagen made the list. Car and driver editor's choice for its great Now, new at 10 tonight, some Westchester homeowners are pretty upset about a new neighbor. The night team's Kevin Ozebeck shows us why in tonight's 7 Investigates. Car wash! No car wash! No car wash! You don't often see a protest pop up in the suburbs, but these homeowners are livid. The community is, is aligned to have no car wash in this, in this block. What he and dozens of others are unhappy about is what is coming to this double lot in their Westchester community. This is the future site of an L car wash, a popular local car wash chain. The project is just not compatible with the neighborhood. The biggest thing is it doesn't match. It just doesn't fit, right? There's plenty of other places. Residents are worried the car wash will change their community's aesthetic. That's just kind of an eyesore for us. And they're worried about increased traffic. Construction plans show the car wash's entrance will be on Southwest 99th Avenue, which is mostly lined with single family homes. Think of our neighbors. This is, is a neighborhood of a lot of kids. The traffic is going to impact us. Up until last year, this land was zoned as single family residential. The owner before El Car Wash bought it successfully lobbied the county commission to rezone it to allow for commercial use. I'm very disappointed in our government. Residents may be disappointed, but the commissioners were following the advice of county staff when the rezoning was approved. The Department of Regulatory and Economic Resources concluded commercial development of the land will not create any significant impacts which will disrupt or degrade the safety and tranquility of these homes. Listen, this car wash did nothing wrong. But when I say that we're fighting the good fight is yes, I am absolutely on the neighbor's side. Commissioner Anthony Rodriguez represents this area and won the seat after the rezoning. He's now asking the county to conduct a new traffic study. This traffic study will determine if there is anything that the county can do to alleviate and improve the traffic flow in that area, in that neighborhood. As for the owners of El Car Wash, their attorney tells Seven Investigates it has never received one traffic complaint at any of its 30 locations, adding, we pride ourselves on being great neighbors. El Car Wash will not be a unique addition to the neighborhood, altering the look and feel of the neighborhood. With all due respect, that's just not true. We want the opportunity to work with them on how we can figure this out so that it works for everybody. Residents say they want to speak directly to El Car Wash about their concerns. The company tells us it's willing to listen. Kevin Ozebeck, 7 News. Some plane problems at Miami Executive Airport. Officials say the aircraft's landing gear collapsed when it landed. This plane ended up in the grass there. Nobody was hurt on board and airport operations were not affected. Back to the historic flooding last week caused major travel trouble for a group of people trying to get to South Florida. So some of them decided to travel together to get to their final destination. 
All right, we're gonna make it happen. Make it oh my goodness. Six strangers, one goal to get to South Florida. But when the historic flooding hit, their plans went up in the air. Anytime you fly, there's you always have to take that chance something can happen. Karen Schultz says she flew in from Cleveland to Atlanta to get on a Spirit Airlines flight to Fort Lauderdale, but it didn't make it there. The flight rerouted to Fort Myers to refuel and stayed there. Five hours later, flight canceled. The airline offered everyone on board a $50 voucher and told everyone to find their own way. I immediately was like, what are we going to do? We can't take a $200 flight or Uber back to Fort Lauderdale. That's when a Genesis rented an SUV and invited the new crew on a road trip to Fort Lauderdale. We just all seemed to to click and I don't know, we just all had good positive energy. A Genesis took the wheel and hit the gas all the way to their intended destination. Once we got in the car, uh, initially, you know, I told him I'm junior NASCAR. I'll get us there in good timing. She got them to FLL in under two hours. We had to rely completely on our instinct to say, hey, you know, I think I'm going to put my trust in these people and we're going to make it, you know, and we did. But they all couldn't part ways just yet. The friends joined together with a plan to drop each other off to their final destination. Everyone reaching their beds just in time to go to sleep. This just restores my faith in humanity. Six complete strangers from all over, didn't know each other five hours ago, and here we are packed in a car traveling 130 miles to get home. It took a, a, a great experience and it made it into a day of sunshine. Bravo. The group, by the way, says they plan to keep in touch. Yeah, necessity is the mother of invention. They and, figured it out. And it's so easy to keep in touch these days with sure, social media sure. and everything. That, and, that is great. And the story of how they met, that'll, that'll be quite a story for a long time. Awesome. Next up here on the 19th night, a Chicago couple is recovering now after a weekend attack by a group of teenagers. And tonight they are talking about this violent attack. Hi again, everybody. I'm Josh Moser. Coming up in sports like the heat, the Panthers will play game two of their playoff series. We talk puck. Plus, Drake Callender was just named to the U.S. men's national soccer team. We speak to the Inter-Miami goalie ahead of a potential U.S. debut tomorrow night against Mexico. A Chicago couple becoming the victims of random rage roughed up and robbed by a group of teenagers. They were out looking for a place to grab some dinner when they were attacked. And tonight that couple is speaking about that beating. It was just absolutely random. We didn't know anybody. We were just trying to walk through a group of people. The young couple is speaking out for the first time since the weekend attack. It happened as the couple was out looking for a bite to eat in downtown Chicago. They said they found themselves trying to navigate through a crowd. That's when pushing and shoving began. As soon as they pushed me, I told DJ, I said, hey, you know, they, they just shoved me. And he asked them, he was like, yo, don't shove her. Who shoved her? And as soon as he said that, everything went crazy. The crowd of teens pushed Ashley to the ground and turned on DJ. Video of the attack has gone viral. They were jumping him in the middle of the street. It got pretty bad. The group also robbed them. My Yeezys, her uh, sandals, her Apple Watch, my hat, Both and phones. glasses. It was another incident of what city officials are calling a teen takeover. Hundreds out and about enjoying the weather, but the behavior that followed was anything but. The vast majority of young people came downtown, came downtown because it was a great um, weather and an opportunity to enjoy the city. That's absolutely entirely important. Um, there are a few that came with different intentions, and they have, they have and they will be dealt with. DJ, who suffered the brunt of the beating, is now recovering from injuries to his face, shoulder, and back. The couple thanked yeah. passersby for helping yeah, yeah. get them to safety. Her name is Lenora. She gave us shoes, and took her, us home, took us to the hospital. Her husband as well. Thank you so much. Chicago police say there are more than a dozen arrests made over the weekend. It's unclear if any of them were related to this particular incident. The man who shot a teenager in Missouri facing justice, 84-year-old Andrew Lester, surrendered today, charged with two felony counts in Kansas City. Prosecutors say he shot and critically injured a black teen who rang his doorbell. 16-year-old Ralph Yarl attempted to pick up his younger siblings that night, but accidentally ended up at Lester's home one block away. 
He survived and has been discharged from the hospital. Well, coming up here tonight for the first time, we're going to see the view from first responders as they work to save actor Jeremy Renner's life. And drivers have to hit the brakes when an alligator crosses a Florida street. Beautiful day across South Florida. Now, tomorrow looking mostly dry across the area, but we may see a little bit of moisture returning on Thursday with a chance for a few showers. We'll have a lot more coming up in just a few minutes. For hourly forecasts, live radar, and the 7 Weather blog, tap the 7 Weather app. Just search WSBN in your app store. Sponsored by Estrella Insurance. A scaly jaywalker causing quite a commotion in West Palm Beach. An alligator blocked a residential street and traffic had to be diverted. Stunned residents there called police and they called in Florida Fish and Wildlife to trap and relocate this six foot guy. People who live in the area say likely it came from a nearby canal that is said to be quite popular with these reptiles. Now, 7 Weather with Chief Meteorologist Bill Farrell. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, check out the numbers for today. It was a lovely day across South Florida. Lows were in the mid to upper 60s, 72 in Key West. Highs in the little mid 80s, but the most important number, zero. No rain at any of the official rain gauges. 75 degrees right now, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Pompano Beach, 73 in West Kendall and Pembroke Pines, and Key West, a very mild 74. The pressure is rising. The wind out of the north northeast and the humidity at 55%. Here's a storm tracker. It is dry from the Bahamas into South Florida. No rain overnight, and tomorrow's looking mostly dry as well. If we do see anything, it might just be an isolated sprinkle. Now, speaking of all that heavy rain we had last week, uh, about, uh, oh, about 24 inches of rain coming down in roughly a seven hour period right around Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood International. Well, when you look at a comparison here uh, between uh, the 12th of April with all of the rainy season last year, it was almost the same number we got a season's worth of rainfall in less than seven hours. And by the way, the record uh, from 1979, 14 and a half inches. I'm sure that once the National Weather Service has looked at all the numbers, obviously we're setting a new high water mark. Now for tonight, very nice and pleasant. By tomorrow, high pressure moves over into the western Atlantic, looking at a mainly dry day with a nice breeze. And then that high will continue to move towards the northeast. And by then, the wind is going to tap into a little bit of moisture sitting across the Atlantic. Some of those showers can make their way into South Florida. Here's the marine forecast. Small craft exercise caution. Threat of rip currents. Biscayne Bay with a moderate chop. The Florida Keys, no advisories. The wind at around 10 to 15 knots and seas two to four feet. Now we're also looking at the potential for some minor nuisance tidal flooding uh, during your next high tide. That happening around 249 in Fort Lauderdale, Miami 318, 622 for the Keys. By the way, that's all due to the new moon happening shortly. It's adding some extra pull to the world's oceans. And then for tonight, mostly clear. Overnight lows, upper 60s to the low 70s. By tomorrow, plenty of sunshine, nice seasonal feel. Highs in the low to mid 80s. Here's your extended outlook. Some showers on Thursday, fine on Friday. Uh, Earth Day looking pretty good, but hot. High of 88. A weak front moves in on Sunday, and that keeps us nice and mild through Tuesday. That's your 7 on 7 forecast. Phil, thank you. Amazon has some prime news for some South Florida students. The e-commerce giant is awarding $40,000 school of their choice and then take part in a paid internship with the retail giant after their freshman year. It is extremely important. It has made the, my college decisions a lot easier. I now have the necessary funding to be able to go to MIT. Um, I'm extremely honored to be here, and it, it's, it's an amazing opportunity, and I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm extremely grateful. It's, <laughs> it's an extremely happy day. Thank you very much. Aww. Congrats to you, wow. MIT. Wow. Real. Enjoy Boston. Uh, it's a $16 million dollar investment by Amazon. 400 
scholarships will be handed out to students just like her across the country. Incredible. Enjoy Boston in the spring and summer. It's got its moments <laughs> in the wintertime, too. Just bundle up. Part of fall. Right, right. Still ahead tonight, DeMar Hamlin getting another green light months after collapsing during an NFL game. We'll hear from him about the news he's been waiting a long time to hear. South Florida comes alive in night. The city and the people have a different look. We are South Florida's number one choice. Seven years. Morning. Waking up to bright sunshine. New. Bring in the energy. And night. Only on the night thing. No one does it better. We are Seven News. A new view of the tense moments just after actor Jeremy Renner's snowplow accident. First responders are seen working urgently to save his life. They were in a race against time. A race they miraculously won. The night team's Lynn Martinez has more of the video. He came out, the sun guy out there came up Alex, yeah. yeah. Alex, yeah. He came up screaming. Get, come on, guys. Actor Jeremy Renner's Nevada neighbors tell police what they saw minutes after Renner was crushed by his massive snowplow. I, I came out and I saw this and I came out. That's my was way he to laying face. on the ground? Oh, that, like, he had moved. He tried to get out and I was like, no, 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 stay where you are. This is where it happened. Renner was trying to help free his nephew's stuck truck when he was crushed under the machine. First responders tell police where they found him. Did you guys bring him up here or was he right here when you right guys... Right here. Awesome. That's yeah. where he was. He hadn't moved. That's where it happened. Okay, and then the, the tractor just, or that rolled that way? I'd assume he had rolled over top of him. That's... That truck was stuck in the driveway. They were using this to get the truck out of the driveway. The nephew in the black camo jacket explains to deputies how Renner ended up under the large machine. He went up and then turned around, got out to tell me something, and then that's when it started coming at me like full force. That's when he tried to jump back in there. Renner would make a life or death decision. The snow cat kept moving and the 14,000 pound plow crushed him. You can see where emergency crews worked on him. Okay. He slipped because these tracks, there's no way to, there's no way to stand on them. There's no oh, way. He tried to jump on it? He tried to jump on it into and the it tank, took him under? and it took him under. The actor broke 30 bones in his body and pierced his liver. Doctors say it was touch and go at one point, but three months later, he's at the premiere of his new series, Renovations, Grateful to be alive. There's more wonderment still to be had and um, I feel very grateful to, to be here to continue finding that wonderment. Doctors say part of the credit to saving his life is the fact that Jeremy Renner was not alone and he was airlifted quickly to a trauma center and he was lucky. In the Newsplex, Lynn Martinez, 7 News, 19. He sure was. Amazing. Also here on 7 Million saw the moment he collapsed on the football field. Months later now, Bill's safety, DeMar Hamlin, is ready to make his comeback. Atlanta team's Josh Moser is in the plex with that for us, Josh. What a remarkable it would be, return it would be, Craig and Belkis today. A significant step, Hamlin officially medically cleared to return to football. I died on national TV in front of the whole world. The sports world pausing. When Bill's safety, DeMar Hamlin's heart stopped on the field, going into sudden cardiac arrest in a game against the Cincinnati Bengals three and a half months ago. This event was life-changing, but it's not the end of my story. So I'm here to announce that I plan on making a comeback to the NFL. His teammates are with him all the way. It's been good to see him in the building. Um, you know, right when this thing happened, that, that was his mindset from the very start. And... You know, you're never going to doubt a guy like that who's had a lot of adversity in his life and he's continued to find ways. Tuesday, Hamlin explaining publicly for the first time exactly what happened. What looked to be a routine tackle turned out to be anything but. Just hope that he's going to be okay. The diagnosis of pretty much what happened to me was basically commodio cortis. It's a direct blow at a specific point in your heartbeat that causes cardiac arrest. And five to seven seconds later, um, you fall out, and that's pretty much what everyone's seen January 2nd of this year. We don't exactly know when we will see Hamlin playing again on Sundays. Until that moment, he will continue to have the full support from the Bills organization. Super excited for, for DeMar. Um, you know, he's, he's moving forward one step at a time here. He's been cleared uh, from a physical standpoint, and we'll provide all the mental help we can from a mind, body, and spirit standpoint. My heart is still in it, you know, my heart is still in the game. Uh, I love the game. Um, it, it's something I want to prove to myself, not nobody else. Um, riding the roller coaster of emotions, I'm taking it one day at a time, and I'm, I'm trusting God. I'm walking by faith. 
Incredible. Hamlin has two years remaining on his current deal in Buffalo. Also serves the shame agent with Dolphin star Jalen Waddle, and hopefully there are many football chapters left to write in Hamlin's story. We have more sports coming up next. The Heat will be without Tyler Hero in game two of their playoff series. Jimmy Butler explaining how the Heat hope to make up for their starting shooting guard being out. Plus hockey experts giving the Panthers a 25% chance to come out of their series against the Bruins. The locker room reacts to that number on the other side of the break. Time now for seven sports with Josh Moser. Hi, everybody. Unfortunately, the injury report, the big news ahead of Heat Bucks Game 2. Tyler Hero is out. Will undergo surgery Friday to fix his broken right hand sustained in Game 1. Giannis is also officially doubtful after not practicing today, dealing with the sore back that pulled him out of the series opener. Hero's right hand awkwardly catching the floor on Sunday. Third-year guard was hoping for a big playoff performance after signing a max contract this offseason. I don't think you got anything to prove. Everybody in this league understands and knows the caliber of player that Tyler is. Obviously, we're going to miss him. Obviously, we want him out there competing with us on both sides of the floor. It's a hurdle, um, but we'll figure it out. We'll get it for him. Other NBA playoff action, 4-5 matchup in the East, Cavs and Knicks. Darius Garland going off. Six triples on the night, leading to a game-high 32. Cavs win 107-90, evening the series at 1. 2-7 Eastern Conference matchup, Celtics, Hawks, and Boston dominating from the jump. Jason Tatum scoring 29, Celts roll 119-106, taking a commanding two games to none lead. The Panthers getting set for their second game of their Stanley Cup playoff series against the top-seeded Bruins. Game one going to Boston by the final of 3-1. And the Panthers just making too many mistakes. The Bruins able to capitalize. The Cats know if they play their game, there is no doubt they can advance against the Bruins, who entered the postseason with the best regular season record in NHL history. 100%. Um, we, we believe in ourselves. We have the players here to do it. We have the confidence in, in ourselves and in, in the other guys. We are able to do it. And uh, like you said, they didn't feel like um, didn't feel like it's one and eight seed, but it felt like we're we're even. Marlins hoping to take back-to-back -back games against the Giants. Jorge Soler, the hero in Game 1, coming off the bench at a game-winning pinch hit homer. The last Tuesday home game every month, it's a jazz band at Lone Depot. And hey, as long as it puts people in the seats, bottom four, Jazz Chisholm with a little jazz music of his own. A three-run blast to right, putting Miami back on top, 4-2. Love the Euro step. Top six, Edward Cabrera in some tough trouble. Two runners in scoring position for David Villar. See ya. Cabrera K's eight different Giants. Marlins win 4-2, taking seven of their last eight. College baseball, the Canes hosting Bethune Cookman. The hot bats for Miami at the jump. Bottom two, Carlos Perez launching one into the stratosphere. Catcher making it a 4-0 game on the two-run shot. Bottom three, it's Yo-Yo Morales' turn. Yohandi. With a solo shot to left, the 17 ranked Canes winning a route 12 to 6. Inter Miami goalie Drake Callender named this week to the U.S. men's national team. The United States hosting Mexico in a friendly in Phoenix, Arizona tomorrow night. The two of us getting a chance to chat this afternoon following his training session. The man that leads Major League Soccer in saves and save percentage will be called upon and will be ready. You may think that there's a lot of pressure. You may think that, you know, there's more at stake. But for me, the approach is just to be, be in a space where I know I can go into the game with full confidence, embracing everything that you're feeling and going into the game knowing that you're going to give it your all. So Canada claims Drake the musician. Well, now we have our own Drake, Drake Calendar. Good luck to the United States tomorrow night. That is your look at sports. Keep it locked. Craig and Belkis are back after this. so much to see in Wynwood. You probably need a whole day just to walk it. You would, but when you're zipping by on a Segway, it's twice the art in half the time. The night team's Alex Miranda has a look at one tour that'll even introduce you to the artists. It's tonight's So Flow Fun. Wynwood.
whether you like art, whether you don't like art. It's just, uh, it just blows my mind. I, I always see something new every time I come out here. But on a segue, you'll probably see a thousand new things in the Arts District. With Wynwood Segway Tours, you can cover the whole area within one or two hours. So it just makes it so much more easy, more efficient to cruise through. And cruising is always fun. We've been rolling around Wynwood on these segways. First of all, how fun is it to ride a segway? I'm enjoying the sights. I'm enjoying the good wind, the good weather. Okay, when I say I love it, it is so fun. It's a great family activity with with about three to four minutes of our training, you're a pro. I mean, we call it Mall Cop Certified. Mall Cop Certified, I'm in. This was done in five days, can you believe that? There are one hour tours for $65, two hours for 95. You'll hear and learn from the tour guide, which uh, gives the tours in English, Spanish, or Portuguese. But for a premium experience, add 100 more and you'll get to meet the artists on the tour. They'll be standing at their mural when we pull up and you'll hear from them directly for about five minutes. They'll tell you anything you want to know. Like coat sneakers. You see the mural is the Michael Jordan shoes. It's, a, it's the more biggest inspiration for me. Jordan 1, uh, Jordan 4, 8. What sneakers are you wearing? Is it, is it the fly? Nice. It flies. Wait, but are these Jordans or no? No, no, it's not Jordan. <laughs> but it's one of the Nike. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Dissum 305. Also, big uh, time local guy. It took us seven days to get it done. Seven days? Seven days. No, 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 but you weren't the only one doing it, though, no? No, I did it alongside uh, my two friends, Sinner and Drips. Plus, Melski. You get inspired and you get to meet people from all over the world. You meet kids that, you know, are inspiring artists as well. She's more of like uh, cartoons and caricatures and things like that. But if an artist is out of state, like Allison Bamcat, we get them on a Zoom call and you'll still get to interact and still talk to them face to face. As somebody who's walked around Wynwood um, for hours and hours and hours a day and been on my feet, um, I think it's kind of nice to have another option for people who maybe aren't as mobile. The only question, this segue or that segue? But um, anyone that just wants to have fun learn something, see some really unique, beautiful pieces. They're all going to love this tour. It's for anybody. To book a Wynwood Segway tour, head to our website, WSVN.com. Just click on links mentioned. In the Flex, Alex Miranda, 7 News 19. It is kind of fun. Yeah. New way to see it and meet the artists and everything else. Good way to spend an afternoon. And hopefully you figure out how to ride that thing. Ride somebody that needs to. Don't end up in the ER. <laughs> Hey, that's it. That's 7 News First at 10. Ciao, ciao. I'm Val Kiesner. Thanks, Stephen. Stay with us. 7 News at 11 o'clock is next. Now on the 19, drivers continue to crisscross South Florida on a quest for gas. I don't know what I would have done because my car's on empty. Tonight, we're hearing the 911 calls that went out as floodwaters rushed in to people's homes. There's just water transgetting everywhere. Governor DeSantis meeting with conservatives in the nation's capital. But some asking why he isn't meeting with residents here who are flooded out. And two educators accused of disturbing crimes with students. Tonight, they're both in trouble with the law. This is 7 News at 11. And then it's 11 o'clock. Problems persist at gas stations across the area. Drivers waiting in long lines, hoping for a chance to fill up. Hello again. Good evening. This fuel frustration is brought on by last week's severe flooding at Port Everglades. Tonight, the state's emergency management department sending in some help. Here's the night team's Alex Browning. This is your first try? Yeah. I got lucky. Seriously, I got lucky. Some hit the gas jackpot Tuesday night on their first try. What's about three gas stations and nothing there. Others had to roll the dice a few times. It's a little crazy. This is the game of chance South Florida drivers have been playing for days since historic flooding interrupted the supply chain of fuel coming out of Port Everglades. Right now I have zero miles. Yeah, of course. Like, it's like scary. It just sucks. It sucks. Gotta get to work, you know? Stressful. Very stressful. The relief and stress being felt by so many as the majority of gas stations in South Florida are without. 
and long lines growing day and night from Miami-Dade to Broward at the few stations that do have fuel. We're waiting like 45 minutes, maybe more. And since there are many exits, you know, people are getting in and they're not respecting the lines. That's not a problem at this shell in North Bay Village. Cops off the beat to help keep the peace, directing drivers to the pumps. We continue to make improvements. You see an additional terminal. Leadership at Port Everglades says every day more fuel is being delivered. Eight of the 12 fuel terminals now operational with work to get the remaining up and running soon. They stress there is plenty to go around and no need to panic. Tanker spotted by seven Sky Force at the dock unloading and even more anchored off the coast waiting. The lines that we have for trucks, this is a 24-7 operation. They're not shutting down until they get back to capacity. It's just the process of getting the gas to the pump. A little relief tonight that you're filling up. I hope I can get to this one now, but we'll see, man. And to help with the supply here in South Florida, the state says they are sending down fuel tankers from both Cape Canaveral and Tampa to help resupply South Florida with gas. In Fort Lauderdale, Alex Browning, 7 News 19. Well, residents in Southeast Broward continuing the painful process of cleaning up tonight. Their homes hit hard by the historic floods, and they say help is hard to come by. The night team's Maricela Burgo spoke with one family. Oh, my goodness. Nearly a week after historic flooding impacted so many South Florida neighborhoods, families like this one haven't stopped cleaning up. This is our lovely kitchen, or what's left of it. Irina is desperately trying to save anything. The water was coming through the windows, through the doors, through the, through the walls even. She remembers that night, specifically when her and her daughter escaped. Where did you escape from? From this window, from this kitchen window. It was 1040. It was me, my cat, and my autistic seven-year-old child that we were escaping from here from possibly drowning or getting electrocuted. More than 20 inches of rain fell in a matter of hours that day last week. She shares pictures from inside her home just days after it flooded and shows us around her home today. This used to be our beautiful, lovely bedroom. Please don't step on the, on the carpet because it's still soaking wet. You can see the paint on the walls bubbling. And as they look deeper, it doesn't look any better. People throughout the Edgewood neighborhood of Fort Lauderdale have been tossing out everything that's damaged. But how is it that we are now basically left homeless with this shell of a house that's not livable right now and nobody's doing anything, nobody's trying to reach out, nobody's trying to provide help. We are trying to look for it and everywhere we look we're getting denied or rerouted to something else. This family was shopping for new insurance. They, like so many other families, didn't have it and are now waiting for FEMA to help. It's devastating. Their hope is to move back in in about six months to a year and raise the foundation of the home. Until then, they're trying to save whatever they can. We're just going through bits and pieces of our life, what's left of it, and trying to figure out if we can save anything, what to do with it. And we just need help. Something else you may not think about is how overwhelming the smell is as families clean up their homes. There is only one shelter open in Fort Lauderdale. It's at Holiday Park. Reporting from Fort Lauderdale, Mayor Sala Burgos, 7 News 19. Also in the news tonight, Governor DeSantis is in Washington meeting with conservative lawmakers. Some Democrats in Florida are criticizing the timing of the trip, saying he should be here helping flood victims. The team's Joe Rose has more from the Plex. Joe? Well, Craig, the head of the Democratic Party here in Florida is saying the governor should be front and center when it comes to helping the people of his state. Tonight, the governor's office is answering back. Ron, can you sign my book, please? Governor. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on the road, making a stop in Washington, D.C. Tuesday, quickly whisked into the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank. The governor trying to shore up support from Republicans on Capitol Hill as he considers a run for the White House. Are you excited about the turnout, members of Congress? His visit behind closed doors as he avoided a crowd out front. protesters gathering with signs as DeSantis also takes heat from some Democrats down south. When there is a disaster that happens in a part of our state, 
He has an obligation to be here. Florida Democratic Party Chairwoman Nikki Freed calling DeSantis out as South Florida still deals with the aftermath of historic flooding from last week and now long lines at the gas pumps in a historically Democratic county. Let me tell you, if this flood had happened in Naples, if it had happened in the villages, if it had happened in, in outside of inside of Polk County, he would have been there himself. DeSantis quickly declaring a state of emergency for Broward County last week. His office telling 7 News Tuesday night, Florida's Division of Emergency Management has been active since the flooding occurred and are even now working to alleviate gas supply issues and ensure no obstacles from the state keep companies in South Florida from keeping gas pumps stocked. Kevin Guthrie heads Florida's Division of Emergency Management. Yes, Kevin is doing his job. Ron is not. As governor of the state of Florida, you have an obligation to show up to your people, not just to send people. At least one Republican, Lance Gooden of Texas, said he would support Donald Trump in the 2024 election after meeting with Governor DeSantis today. Now, tomorrow, DeSantis will make a public appearance in South Carolina as he continues to meet with supporters and try to garner GOP support. We're live in the Newsplex. Joe Rotes, 7 News 19. Just when stations there, when an educator walked out of jail after being accused of crossing the line with a student. She's not the only teacher facing alarming allegations. Here's the night team's Sheldon Fox. Trusted to teach and take care of children, a pair of fired educators get a failing grade from their school communities and a letter grade of C from police for alleged criminal behavior. You doing, Tracy? Only seven news cameras were there Tuesday when Tracy Smith waited to be picked up from jail. Would you like to say anything about what happened? The mom of three and ex-head of the Exceed Preparatory Academy in Coral Springs is now a defendant charged with engaging in sexual conduct with a student. It came as a complete shock to everyone at the school. Hi, I'm Tracy Smith, president of Smith Smiles Toy Donations. The 20 plus year teacher also heads up Smith Smiles which delivers toys to kids in the hospital. Coral Springs cops accuse her of hosting a teen to all day visits in the principal's office for solicitation, inappropriate touching, and photo exchanges online. She's been fired. In Miami-Dade, there's the disgraced terminated civics teacher at Country Club Middle School, Muhammad Ahmed. The 28-year-old busted after a months-long investigation that revealed he pursued an alleged intimate relationship with a 13-year-old boy. He was always really close with the kid, buying him gifts. That kid would always come to his classroom and Mr. Ahmed would always give him money. He always had him in his room, the door was locked. Cops say they searched his phone and found lots of interaction between the two. An arrest report detailing a shirtless Ahmed chasing and touching the child in his classroom. Police saying his phone was packed with child porn and a birthday card from Ahmed to the student included this, quote, I look forward to celebrating a lifetime of birthdays with you. I love you so much. He's accused of child abuse and other offenses and has been unable to be reached for comment. His fellow fired former educator in Broward Smith, any comment at all, had nothing to say. Both defendants have bonded out and have criminal pending cases. We're in Coral Springs tonight. Sheldon Fox, 7 News 19. Southwest Airlines back in service after experiencing some delays and disruptions this morning. The FAA paused half the airline's departing flights at the airline's request after Southwest experienced a technical glitch causing it to lose connection to some operational data. More than 1,800 flights, 44% of Southwest's schedule, including some at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International, were briefly delayed. One person is dead tonight after the partial collapse of a parking garage in lower Manhattan. Several cars were crushed after the concrete floors pancaked on top of each other. Vehicles tumbled to street level. Authorities believe they'd accounted for everyone inside, but searches continued this evening to make sure no one was in any of the crumpled cars. Five people were injured. One garage employee was rescued after leaping onto a neighboring rooftop. It wasn't immediately clear what caused the collapse. Buildings department records show the three-story structure had operated as a garage since at least the 1920s. 
Still ahead here at 11 o'clock, it was supposed to be a smooth flight to South Florida. But the historic floods and a change of plans turning a group of strangers into best pals will have their story after the break. Deco Drive and Auto Nation are driving you to places that are new in town. Fashion, entertainment, or the latest hotspot. If it's new, it's on Auto Nation's New in Town. Deco Drive, Thursday at 7.30. Floodwaters at FLL rerouted their flight, but it also brought together a group of complete strangers. When they arrived in Florida's West Coast, they were still hours away from their final destination. And what they decided to do next turned things around for the better. All right, we're going to make it happen. Make it happen. Oh my goodness. Six strangers, one goal to get to South Florida. But when the historic flooding hit, their plans went up in the air. Anytime you fly, there's a, you always have to take that chance something can happen. Karen Schultz says she flew in from Cleveland to Atlanta to get on a Spirit Airlines flight to Fort Lauderdale, but it didn't make it there. The flight rerouted to Fort Myers to refuel and stayed there. Five hours later, flight canceled. The airline offered everyone on board a $50 voucher and told everyone to find their own way. I immediately was like, what are we going to do? We can't take a $200 flight or an Uber back to Fort Lauderdale. That's when a Genesis rented an SUV and invited the new crew on a road trip to Fort Lauderdale. We just all seemed to to click and I don't know, we just all had good positive energy. A Genesis took the wheel and hit the gas all the way to their intended destination. Once we got in the car, uh, initially, you know, I told him I'm junior NASCAR. I'll get us there in good timing. She got them to FLL in under two hours. We had to rely completely on our instinct to say, hey, you know, I think I'm going to put my trust in these people and we're going to make it, you know, and we did. But they all couldn't part ways just yet. The friends joined together with a plan to drop each other off to their final destination. Everyone reaching their beds just in time to go to sleep. This just restores my faith in humanity. Six complete strangers from all over, didn't know each other five hours ago, and here we are packed in a car traveling 130 miles to get home. It took a a, a gray experience and it made it into a day of sunshine. Love that. The group, by the way, says they do plan to keep in touch. Well, plane problems at Miami's executive airport. Officials say an aircraft's landing gear collapsed when it landed, sending it into the grassy area there. No one on board was hurt and airport operations were not affected by that. So to come here tonight, Amazon workers making a special delivery to some South Florida students. It was a beautiful day today across South Florida. We're looking at one more dry day across the area. 10% chance of rain tomorrow. But then our chances go up for Thursday, Friday, and through Saturday before another front moves in, moves in for the second half of the weekend and then dries us out for the start of next week. We'll have a lot more coming up. Amazon has some prime news for South Florida students. The company is awarding $40,000 scholarships at scholarships as part of its Future Engineers program. Recipients will study computer science or engineering at a college of their choice, then take part in a paid inter internship with the retail giant after their freshman year. 
Be it is future. extremely important. It has made the, my college decisions a lot easier. I now have the necessary funding to be able to go to MIT. Um, I'm extremely honored to be here, and it, it's it's an amazing opportunity, and I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm extremely grateful. It's, <laughs> it's an extremely happy day. Thank you very much. She is so sweet and just so grateful. 400 scholarships will be handed out by Amazon throughout the country. In to the scholarship, there's... Now, Seven Weather with Chief Meteorologist Bill Farrell. Hi, good evening everyone. What a great day. We had morning lows in the mid to upper 60s, 72 in Key West. Highs were in the low to mid 80s, but the most important number here, zero rainfall today at the major airport sites. Presently under mostly clear skies, everyone is checking in with temperatures in the low to mid 70s. The pressure is rising, the wind out of the northeast, the humidity at 57%. The storm tracker is showing that everything is nice and dry across South Florida and the Bahamas. And it will remain that way tonight and throughout much of the day tomorrow. But there are some changes as we move in to the day on Thursday. By the way, the historic flooding that we had on the 12th of April, we got about 24 inches of so or so of rainfall in a seven hour period. That's about as much as we had all of 2022 in Broward County. So indeed, a one in 1,000 year rain event. For us this evening, nice and pleasant, high pressure dominating our weather. By tomorrow, it's gonna to cross right over Florida, making its way towards the east. No big change, nice, breezy, mostly dry. And then by Thursday, as the high continues to track towards the northeast, it's gonna tap into some moisture here in the Atlantic, across it over the Bahamas, and some of that will reach South Florida, so a little better chance of some rainfall by then. The marine forecast, small craft exercise caution, threat of rip currents, Biscayne Bay with a moderate chop. The Florida Keys, no advisories, seas inside the reef two to three, beyond the reef three to four, coastal waters with a moderate chop. Your next high tide, 249 in Fort Lauderdale, Miami 318, 622 in Key West, and we could see some minor uh, the nuisance tidal flooding all due to extra high high tides and due to a new moon happening shortly and that exerts an extra pull on the world's oceans and then for this evening mostly clear very nice and mild overnight lows upper 60s to the low 70s beautiful tomorrow plenty of sunshine highs in the low to mid 80s breezy at the coast and here's your extended outlook a few showers on thursday fine on friday some rain possible on saturday hot high of 88 a front moves in on Sunday, and that's going to make it nice and mild for Monday and Tuesday. That's your 7 on 7 forecast. Nice and mild. Thanks, Phil. Don't hear those uh, words coupled together this time of year all that often. Enjoy so. them. <laughs> no kidding. Next up here in sports, the Heat and Panthers both continue their chase for a championship tomorrow night. And the Marlins are red hot. They look to stay that way against San Francisco tonight. Josh is here with some highlights when we come back. Into the bottom of the floor. Hi, everybody. Heat guard Tyler Hero says he will undergo surgery on Friday to fix his broken right hand. The goal is to be back for the NBA Finals four weeks from now if Miami is still playing. Here is the play where it happened. Hero diving for the loose ball, and you see that right hand awkwardly catching the floor. Hero saying his fingers were in his palm, and he had to push them back up. And he was hoping for a big playoff performance after signing a max contract this offseason. I feel like I had... I had some things to prove this postseason, so it was it was a it was a tough moment. You know, I still still can't believe it. It'll probably sink in, you know, tomorrow night when I can't suit up. It's a shame, you know, that one you get injured, two you get injured on a hustle play. You know, trying to do the right thing. Wishing Tyler the best. The Panthers were grouping after a 3-1 loss to open the playoffs against the top-seeded Bruins. And Florida outshooting Boston in game one. However, the Caps just couldn't cash in. Head coach Paul Maurice explaining his message to his team after reviewing the opener. We didn't make as much out of our chances around their net as they did. We have to do more with what we get before we start thinking about what are the three or four different ways we can open up our offensive game and blow the doors off the Boston Bruins because that's just not going to happen. 
The Marlins open to win back-to-back games against the Giants, the last Tuesday home game every month. It's a jazz band at Lone Depot, and hey, as long as it puts people in the seats, bottom four, Jazz Chisholm with a little jazz of his own. A three-run blast to right that puts Miami back on top, 4-2. Love the Euro step. Top six, Edward Cabrera in some trouble. Two runners in scoring position for David Villar. Big strikeout, Cabrera K's eight Giants. Marlins win 4-2, winners of seven of their last eight. So they are playing very well. Matinee game tomorrow. That is Look at Sports. I'm Josh. Back to Belkis. Thank you, Josh. And that's it. That's 7 News at 11. Ciao, ciao. I'm Belkis Nure. I'm Craig Stevens. Thanks for being with us and join us again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Have a good night.